Hello everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be continuing on with Shutter Island. You know how we do it, my constitutional rights are directly violated, it has destroyed my property and my businesses, I'm putting out as much intellectual pro property content that I can to try to get something going before the end of summer. If not, I'll just start bleeding out my savings because nobody treats me with decency or respect. My life is fucking disgusting, I know people don't like to hear it and they blame me for it, but there's some good major themes for this one, but when you get blamed for being crazy and you're not, and then people just can't accept science, and then they destroy all of your property, and all you want is a paycheck. Your life is disgusting. My life is disgusting. So I'll continue on with another movie review. I will never have constitutional rights. I'll never have a family. I will never have a career. I'll never have access to any social structures because people will legitimately just act like they don't exist. All you need to do is click on one of 850 fucking videos on the internet so I can get a little bit of traction on something. But that will never happen because Brad is supposed to suffer, because we can stand behind closed doors and say he's done a lot of research. And so my big reward in life is to not live one day of my life and be called smart when I'm dead. So that's fun stuff. I'll never live one day of my life. And if these tables turn, it's, it's treason must be met with capital punishment. Absolutely no exceptions whatsoever fucking ever must be met with capital punishment. All the YouTubers aren't disclosing scientific information, all the academics, on certain all of the law enforcement agents. So we have, you know how we do it? Again, that's how we have to start off. Again, there's nothing wrong with me. Again, just being tortured and having your entire life stolen from you is not a fun experience. It just really just isn't. But I'll give you my overall impressions and grade after reading the logistics of the movie. If you've not seen it, would like to base or not base on my recommendation, you're going to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts. We'll be discussing the plot synopsis and character development, and any similar movies or major themes. And so, Shutter Island was released in 2010. It is rated R. It is a thriller slash mystery. It has a runtime of 2 hours and 18 minutes. Um, you can watch it on... I just watched it on... Um, you know, I'm looking at the where to watch it on Google. It doesn't say... I, watch, I just watched it on uh, Showtime. So again, I accidentally, I accidentally renewed my membership there. And there's not very many movies on there that I want to watch. Um, but it says... The implausible escape of a brilliant murderess brings U.S. Marshal Teddy Daniels, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, and his new partner, played by Mark Ruffalo, to Ashcliff Hospital, a fortress-like insane asylum located on a remote, wind-swept island. The woman appears to have vanished from a locked room, and there are hints of terrible deeds committed within the hospital walls. As the investigation deepens, Teddy realizes he will have to confront his own dark fears and hopes to make it off the island alive. Directed by Martin Scorsese. 89% liked it on Google, 90% liked it on Just Watch, which is our random review site of today. 69% on Rotten Tomatoes, nice, and 8.2 out of 10 on IMBD. So it's macabre, eerie, and thrilling is why to watch, according to Google. So overall, I have seen it before, I forgot most of the plot, I saw it a while ago. Um, it's decent. I liked it. Um, mystery thriller. Anything I really have to like, just like, really focus on the movies. Uh, I watch movies closely for the writing scripts, but I don't know. Mystery and thriller. Good. Just no real opinions. No real movies. It's like this one's really good for me or really bad for me. So the genre is all right. Um, the tone, the musicality of the piece, I thought it was pretty ominous tone for a thriller mystery. Decent cinematography, production value. That was a little long. Um, I thought it could have been done a little little sooner, closer to maybe two hours. In two hours and 20 minutes really isn't that long for a movie, but I found myself like, you know, how much longer is this going to go? Um, so overall, I, I did enjoy it, though. I thought, I thought the plot was, was rather unique. Um, I don't know how, because I haven't seen every movie out there. But I'm going to give it a B plus. I thought it was highly entertaining, especially if you've not seen it before. So you know, I remember most of the major uh, developments, but if you've not seen it, I thought this was good for a thriller mystery, which is not my typical genre. So overall, I recommend this one if you've not seen it. I mean, it was highly acclaimed. I remember back when it came out, it definitely caused a buzz. So I recommend this one if you have not seen it now, you want to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts. So the movie opens up. You have Teddy Daniels and Chuck Ale, or just Chuck T and Teddy, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. They're going on a ferry to this place called Shutter Island, which houses the Ashcliff Hospital for insane people. And so Teddy and Chuck get acquainted with one another. Um, they share some cigarettes on the bow of the ship, and Teddy, um, you know, talks about, you learn a little bit that Teddy's wife has died in a, in a fire, and, you know, the U.S. Marshal's going to um, investigate the disappearance of a murderer called Rachel Solando. And so, they arrive at the island, you meet kind of the chief deputy warden, don't know his name or character, but they have to remove their weapons, 
and it's kind of like, you know, Amos is like, why all of the guards are on edge, um, and they, you know, the, uh, dormitory for the, um, males are block A, or, uh, what's called block A, block B, and block C, um, B is for the women, and C is for the most dangerous, um, inmates, or patients, and the light tower, and there's another building on the, on the facility with the light tower. So you go in there, they remove their weapons, you meet, um, I think Dr. Cauley, and there's a bunch of characters and it's kind of old so I'm not going to be able to hit Dr. Cauley, and he introduces you to jo Dr. Jeremiah, who was a German, and so the setting of this movie is like 1950s-ish, right after World War II, like maybe 1954, um, so that's, that's the setting, and it is uh, in America, but... You introduce the two doctors. Uh, Teddy makes out that Doctor Jeremiah is a German, and he was kind of you know wary that maybe he's a Nazi. Again, building into the thing that he's investigating this this crime as to where this person went, and maybe something ominous is going on here. And so they take him, uh, Teddy and Chuck, to do their investigations. Um, they go to the Rachel Solando's uh, dormitory, and she's you know she's been missing since the last day. There's a bunch of rain going on. Again, it's on this like, really jagged edge, bluff cliff type of uh, environment. And, you know, there's the, there's a barred window. There's no doors to let her out. Um, and they get two pairs of shoes, and none of the shoes are gone. So if she would have left, you know, she would have had terribly bad cuts on her feet and would have, you know, probably died. And so he finds this little note under the floorboards that says something like, some clue, like, forward about the total number of patients there it comes into play a little bit later but um they don't really have any success and so teddy and chuck are basically you know, going to say you know we're going to get off of this island tomorrow we're going to catch the ferry um and so you have some more talking between chuck and teddy and um they you know you have more background on teddy he was a you know decorated world war ii veteran um, he admits to like they you know they they liberated one of these camps and killed a bunch of the soldiers. Um, and you get some other more like kind of flashback scenes where Teddy has you know kind of hallucinations of his wife uh, Dolores. Um, and you know he tells Chuck in this scene that Dolores was killed by a guy named um, a Andrew Latus and Andrew Latus um, he he like lit fire. He like lit a fire at a building that she was in, and it, and it killed her. And um, that Andrew Latus had, had been to this place, the Shutter Island, and had been released, um, or not? Oh no, he never got caught. Um, but then you have you know another just kind of like a hallucination scene with the with the main actor from uh, Law and Order SVU, the male actor from that show. He kind of plays uh, this this minor character in this Andrew Latus. Um, but he has this big cut down his face. And so uh, Teddy is also aware of this guy named George Noyce, who was at Shutter Island and got released. Um, and as far as he knows, he's back in Boston or wherever the mainland United States he's from. And so you just get more background on Teddy and, and his characterizations, and then he you know, killed a bunch of uh, German Nazis. You know, another flashback scene where a Nazi tried to kill himself and like botched it and he's bleeding out over an hour. But then the next day shows up, and uh, Teddy and Chuck are going to go um, investigate the island. So you have this big, uh, this big storm, this big tsunami. Um, so the ferry's not coming, and so they kind of go out. They go looking into. Um, they just go out looking, and they, a big storm comes. They go into this another little area, and Teddy's you know starting to get um, suspicious, like again about um, not having the shoes. Maybe there's something ominous going on with, um, um, with brain, uh, you know, the lobotomies, you know, was recent to the time, so they're worried about, you know, maybe they're doing brain experiments on these patients. Um, and Teddy and Chuck have, again, another just kind of, like, interesting moment in the storm, um, and then they get picked up and taken back to the main dormitories, and Teddy and Chuck, and again, I'm not going to get this in order, but they're, they also interview the, um, just the different the staff there um, about you know who could have seen uh, Dolores or Rachel leave, um, and you have a, you have a minor minor character with the the main guy that plays uh, 
uh, Power, who was his, uh, Tommy, he has a Smaya role in this movie. Joseph Sakura, who Glenn, Glenn, plays Glenn Miga, but he just has like a one-liner, but I just thought it was interesting seeing him. Um, regardless, you know, he doesn't get much out of the, the people, and then he has to interview the people from, um, Rachel's, uh, group therapy. And so he uh, interviews this person called, um, Bridget Kearns, and she writes down on the paper, run. And so, you know, he's like interviewing a little notepad and she takes it from him and writes down run. And so it's right at the same time that Chuck gets up to go get some water. And so now, you know, after this big storm comes, um, you know, the, the, all of the faculty are picking up pieces and now they're going to go explore dormitory C where they keep the most dangerous patients to see if there's anything ominous or nefarious going on. And so they get in there, um, one of the one of the inmates had ex like all some of the inmates are running around and one of the other minor characters that's a guard is like you know don't interact with them they'll attack you, and so he gets you know he gets attacked by one of the dudes kind of and he basically has some time to go explore and then he meets George Noyce that is who is still who's back in Shutter Island, and George is talking about how you know you're never gonna get off the island. Um, Blah blah blah. Again, just more building that you know something something's up with what Teddy thinks is going on. And George is like, you know, you did this to me about his face being, you know, he's got a fat lip and like a uh, swollen cheek. And George is like, you were the one that did this to me. And so Teddy and uh, Chuck then go back to the main dormitory, and they're all happy because they've now found Rachel. And so Rachel's feet are not cut up at all, and. They don't really, and Teddy doesn't really believe that it's, that it's Rachel. And so Teddy's you know, having a bunch of uh, migraines and having um, hallucinations throughout the time and more flashbacks to his wife. But the next day, him and um, his partner Chuck, you know, Teddy's really determined that he is going to go um, find out what's in the lighthouse. So the next day, once again, it's kind of rainy, um, but they go there and get a big steep cliff. Um, Teddy's like, you know, I'm gonna try to go there. Chuck is like, no, don't do it. Um, and he kind of goes off a little bit and comes back and then sees Chuck's cigarette kind of like sitting right on the edge of the cliff and looks down and sees Chuck's body down there. So he climbs all the way down, you know, very unbelievable, but you I know, mean, it's like sheer face. But he climbs down, a bunch of rats come out, and he climbs back up, and it's like kind of, it's like nighttime now. And so he, he goes in there. It, there's like a cave with a fire, and he goes in there, and he meets the real Rachel Sol uh, Solando. And so, Rachel tells him that everything that's going on here is a lie, he's never going to get off the island. Um, the cigarettes that they've been feeding him, the, the pills that he's been taking, the food that he's been eating, is all laced with stuff to get him to be like delusional, so they can admit him to the facility and never let him leave. And so, he spends the night there, and climbs back up the next day. And has another um, another minor character in the general who plays the main character from the bridge, like the sheriff in the bridge movie or uh, TV show. Uh, where is he at? Ted Levine. And so he picks him back up. You know they have kind of like a brief conversation of violence. He gets dropped off, and then Teddy decides. You know he's and now he knows that everyone's out to get him, and he has to you know fight his way and rescue his partner to get off the island. And so. He blows up this car. Um, the main doctor, Collie, tells him, you know, you didn't come with a partner. But he blows up this car, and now he's going to go break into the lighthouse himself. So he disarms a guard, um, and then goes up to the lighthouse, and there's Dr. Collie sitting at the very top, very calmly. And so Teddy has this rifle, and Dr. Collie's like, you know, um, the rifle's not loaded. Um, and then there's another, his, his original pistol that he had to hand over when they first got there on the table. And then Dr. Colley makes a phone call and he's like, you know, come on up. And Teddy's trying to rescue his partner, Chuck. And who comes up the stairs? Well, it's Chuck. And so Chuck turns out to be, and now they start to explain to him what's going on. And you really get like the real resolution to the movie or the real kind of plot is that Teddy's been entertaining this fantasy for two years. Uh, Chuck has been his primary um, psychiatrist and they, they basically for the past two days let him live er everything out they wanted to. Basically to say, you know, like, where's is, where is these bad things happening? What facility, what are we doing wrong here? And basically, if he doesn't, you know, if they can't revert him from basically living a double life, Teddy Daniels, I guess, is an acronym or a, has the same amount of letters as his real name, which is Andrew Latis. So he's actually Andrew Latis. Um, 
in the flashback that he's been having was to his wife Rachel Latis, who um, was really because when they when they're investigating Rachel Sol Solando, you know, she's supposed to be um, arrested or in, incarcerated for drowning her three children. And so then you have a longer flashback where Teddy realizes that he is Andrew Latis, and they, and they have the same amount of letters. And Rachel Latis was was really Rachel Solando, uh, or Rachel Solando was really Rachel Latis, and that he her his wife had drowned the children. And when he realized what had happened, he had murdered her. And so he has basically, you know, formed a second identity just to keep away from the realizations of reality where he had ignored Rachel and told him that, you know, she was having like, you know, she was starting to have a psychotic break or something. Um, and so he kind of blamed himself for not, not getting her help so that, um, uh, he had to just kind of put away the memories. And so that's the real the development there, and so they're trying to, if you, if you can't snap out of it or stop you know, living this fantasy, they're going to have to lobotomize him. And so that's the real kind of major plot shift in character development, is going from Teddy Daniels being the U.S. Marshal to really realizing the Andrew Latest and what has really occurred in his life. So again, I thought the plot was strong there. I thought it took a long time to get to the resolution. Um, but regardless, you know, he wakes up the next day, he's like, you know, my name's Andrew Latest, you know, my wife Rachel Latest, and he, he lays out what actually happened in reality, to which point the doctor's are like, good, but um, we, we, did, we did this nine months ago, you, you know, you've been here two years, and then you just keep reverting back to the same story. And so they're not sure, you know, I'm sure I missed some scenes, but if they're not sure if he's really going to stick to it, so the next day they wake up, um, he goes out there, he's, he's sharing a cigarette or having a cigarette with Chuck, and Chuck is like, you know, hey man, what are we going to do today? And Teddy's like, yeah, man, we got to get off this rock. You know, there's something bad going on here. So the final resolution to the movie is that he does not, um, he does not just stay grounded in reality, and they're going to go lobotomize him. So that's the resolution of the movie. You know, overall, I thought it was entertaining. I thought it was a little long. Um, I had seen it before, and thriller mystery is not exactly my genre all of the time. So overall, I thought it was a better one for these types of movies. Overall, uh, B+. Plus. In similar movies, not really sure, in major themes, as in, you know, somebody that's been called crazy, and not even crazy, just like, what's wrong with this thing, because my voice intimidates people, my presence intimidates people, then they call me a threat, and then they blame me for it, and then whatever insecurity they can bu burst out of their mouth, or not even say, is what could be happens to, my, happens to my life. So, again, as someone who, again, tried to get institutionalized by my parents, simply because I want my money, and I've been under financial stress because of crime, demonstrable crime, for seven continuous years, and I've been neglected, scapegoated, and abused by an entire community, and I don't give a fuck, there's nothing wrong with that. I just can't move forward in my life because no one will identify that I exist. So it's the exact, it's the, my life is the exact opposite of this shit. I'm completely fucking normal, but nobody will identify that I exist. And so it just creates the weirdest life ever, and I'm literally gonna have to go work at Target or Lowe's because I have no options to have a career. And I'd be a tenured math professor, a tenured music professor, a music performer. I mean, 15 different careers literally touring right now today, but I can't because people won't acknowledge that I exist. So just anything, and that's might be the more off-putting part of this movie, is just seeing, seeing, mental illness isn't fucking real. Oh, I'll flag my shit, oh, who cares, it's 64 subs. But it isn't. I'm the fucking doctor. I would be a medical doctor if I, get, if I could get one of those magical pieces of paper called a licensure from the state which is committing fraud. But I can't because of fraud. And we can do, on record, recorded, we can do basically whatever we want. So then why can't you pay me? No publication, no acknowledgement, nothing changes besides I can comfortably pay my bills. What the fuck is the difference? And so again, that, that's, it's just, just, my life has been destroyed because people are actually fucking mentally ill, meaning they don't know how to fucking behave, and they will scapegoat you, and they're in a place of authority where they can do stuff to you, and the instant you, you, you are perceived a threat, or simply wanting to be treated like a human being, wanting to have constitutional rights, wanting to live my life, wanting to be able to eat food comfortably, wanting to be able to access healthcare, wanting to be able to have a career, wanting to be able to have a family, I'm the fucking weird guy? I think you guys are the weird fucking people. But anyway, that is it for the movie review, and my life is fucked, and I will see you on the next one until the end of summer, and then once, if I turn 30, which is September 10th, and I have no publication date, and nothing has changed, yeah, all of my work will be destroyed. All of it will be absolutely destroyed. And that is, that is not a joke, that is not a bluff. You guys have snuffed out the most prolific scientists in human history, and I don't give a single fuck about one day's of my work or my entire life's research. I don't care. My, I don't get to live my actual fucking life because you guys can't accept science. It's fucking disgusting. And if you do not take responsibility for your actions, I will come for your children.
That is not a threat. They need to take responsibility for their actions. If they don't cite their sources, they are stealing intellectual property on their own. Facts. So keep lying, cheating, and stealing. That's all you guys could ever fucking do in raising your fucking families and stolen fucking property as you guys destroyed my entire fucking life. What you have done to me will be done to you. Facts. See you on the next one.